deliver this kind of performance for under 300 bucks. I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty good. Hey everybody, hope y'all doing well. I've got a Top Bull 4000 watt inverter review video for you today. So let's see how Top Bull packages their inverter. All right, here we go. There's the accessory pack, user manual, spare fuses, comes with power leads, got a remote switch and everything. So it comes with a remote switch, a 20 foot remote lead. I'll show you how to hook that up. It comes with wire already cabling. So I will inspect that. I'll use it in today's test. It also comes with spare fuses for inside the inverter on the board, a user manual. It's got almost everything you need to get started besides a battery and some circuit protection. Before I get the top bowl hooked up for today's test, I want to go over some of the features of this inverter. It's a 12 volt, 4,000 watt, puts out 110 volts AC at 60 hertz, pure sine wave, high frequency, 8,000 watts of surge, low idle draw, automatic voltage regulation, intelligent fan control, and it's also got seven layers of safety protections, including current leakage, under voltage, over voltage, overload, short circuit, over temp, and reverse polarity. And all those features packed into a compact sized high frequency lightweight inverter weighs less than 15 pounds that's a lot of power you can tote around with you so i got the remote hooked up on the inverter i'll show you this in just a second got the inverter got an amp clamp got the factory wiring got a breaker got a shunt with the display and today's victim excuse me i mean battery is a solar age x 12 volt mini lithium iron phosphate battery be running on this one so there's the setup i'll put the oscilloscope and stuff on it in a minute I'm going to show you the remote first. Now to use the remote, you just simple two pin connection. It's got an alignment mark. You just tighten this little thread down and to use it, make sure the switch on the inverter is in the off position. So this is a 20 foot lead. So this is good for your RV or your powerhouse or, you know, whatever kind of application or mobile, whatever you got, gives you plenty of distance to have a remote on and off. So we'll kick it on. Just hit the button. The fans run for about 20 seconds on startup as part of the self-test through the control circuitry. So the fans will come on. Don't be alarmed about that. And then we'll check the voltage and idle draw first. All right, the inverter display, which is a very nice display, by the way, shows your internal temperatures, your voltage, AC output, DC voltage, and all that stuff, your load. Uh, it's showing 113 volts right there. And we've got 113.5 on the meter. Then for the DC data, Right there, we're showing 13.2, 13.3 volts, bouncing back and forth. And then the shunt's 13.26. Uh, idle draw of 18.6. Manufacturer's claiming around 12. Just a little higher than, than claim, but hey, that's okay. We can work with that. And then as far as amperage, 1.42 here, 1.41 there. So everything's co-witnessing. Very nice. So if you've seen my previous videos, you know I've already ran this inverter. Uh, here's a couple of clips of already running this unit. Let's throw a big load to it. Um, let it eat. can see i've used this inverter in a couple of videos already i've used it a lot behind the scenes it's done everything i've asked it to do as far as the 4000 watt uh i really don't have enough appliances to hit 4000 watts today's video is more of checking the accuracy of the manufacturer's specifications and statements i'm gonna check the sine wave how clean the inverter is things like that so one wave without any load on it is is very clean we'll check it under load in just a minute change the sample time on it and get a little closer view of the wave looks pretty good so now time to put a load to it i've got the resistive load the hair dryer on here mainly want to check a sine wave today let's give it a hit
Well, sine wave stayed pretty clean during that test. I'm gonna hit it again this time, but just wanna watch the voltage, see if the voltage down here on the display is accurate to the meter. So see if it sags. So you can see we pulled around 130 amps on the DC side with that resistive load. Uh, the voltage went down just a smidge below 110, but the inverter's a 110 volt inverter. So of course, unloaded, it's just a little bit higher and uh, held that around that 110 volts. So, you know, that worked like it was supposed to. The sine wave stayed clean, so that's good. Do you want to see what the internal construction or internal build quality is on this unit? Well, of course you do. Give me just a minute. I'll take the screws out, open it up. So I got the top the top cover pulled off. No big deal doing that. You got a few got a few screws right here in the front. You can drop the cover down. The top cover slides out. I wouldn't recommend doing that with one if you've purchased it. You'd probably void your warranty, but this one's not warrantied anyhow. So you know, test rig. I can do what I want to with it. So coming in from let's start on the DC side. Coming in from your battery connections right here. Bus bars coming through the shell of the unit, and then it comes to four number eight two hundred degree celsius silicone jacketed wires with four 30 amp fuses so they're they're allowing up to 120 amps per leg and then on the ac output side over here there these wires are 180 degree uh celsius wire silicone jacketed they're 1.5 square millimeters large capacitors large transformers decent build quality considering the price of this inverter uh, i mean nothing really stands out as is poor craftsmanship it looks like it's well put together nothing looks to be poor quality everything is is right on par with what i've seen in other you know budget high frequency inverters so i'll give you a little view of the fans right here we got the cooling fans nice openness for them coming right in line with the heat sinks and another thing i noticed on this model versus some of the say other budget uh inverters is this one actually the heat sinks are attached to the pcb they're not just floating in the air or relying on the FETs to hold the heat sinks in. The heat sinks are actually anchored into the board, which is good. That will not let your FETs fatigue or any of these little connections here fatigue from the heat sinks moving. So you could take it could take some vibration and nothing's going to shake around in it. Overall, this has been a great little inverter so far. No, no issues with it. It's performed flawlessly. I do have one little one little thing I would like to to address. The terminals right here on the back. That is my only complaint so far, is they are very close together right here. I wish they would have put a separator piece right here between them, like an insulator or something like that, because you're really really close in there, and the little terminal terminal caps, you know, the opening's not quite wide enough to cover the the factory wiring. Which, if you're going to run this inverter at high loads, these wires are not going to be suited for, for what it's capable of delivering. The inverter will outdo these wires easily. If you really want this inverter to perform, you need some big cabling, like this 4 alt cable right here. Um, and that's another thing. I usually run it with 4 alt. I ran it today for this video with this the supplied cabling, but 4 alt at least on this big of an inverter. Uh, look how close the terminals the terminals are right there if you hook them up in the back. So I think there needs to be some kind of insulating piece right there. And like the little cap, even on 4 alt, it does not fit. You know, you can trim it out and all that stuff, but you know, that's just a minor little thing. I wish they would have put, put something right there or either staggered them terminals. Uh, so far, it has done everything I've asked it to do. It hasn't complained. It hasn't done anything weird. Uh, it's run the loads and stayed nice and cool. And idle draws just a tick higher than what they claim. Running, you know, 18, 19 instead of 12. Uh, that's not no big deal to me. I can I can handle that extra six or eight watts. Hey, for a budget inverter at time of filming, it's under three hundred dollars. Deliver this kind of performance for under three hundred bucks. I mean, that's you know that's pretty good. I'll continue to run it. I'll keep you updated. You'll see it in more videos, I'm sure. I hope I earned a like from you. If you're not subscribed, we'd greatly appreciate a subscription. Questions, please put it in the comment section. So thanks for watching the Off Mountain Homestead. Until next time, I'm back here to Grid Don't Go. Y'all have a good day.